I took this trip to really take the time, get to know myself. And I don't think there's been a moment that was more definitive into knowing more so who I am than after this trip. Mm. Where my journal is full. Mm. When I tell you guys, on that journal, I was like like thinking out loud, right? Like I wrote to my exes, I wrote to my dad, I wrote to my mom. Welcome back to another episode of the Sergio Talks podcast. It's your boy Sergio Talks. It's your boy Matt. It's your boy Carl. And um, before we get into this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to give us five stars on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon, Patreon where you guys get an exclusive episode every single Friday. And this week, you guys might get some behind the scenes Euro trip stuff because the boys just got back from Euro. Euro. Rope. Um, after a little under two weeks. So. We traveled around Europe-ish, kind of. We did two countries, but still. <laughs> we, 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 we did some pit stops along the way, and, uh, and now we're back. It's, back on track. Yeah, it's... I think we're all kind of still, like, on cloud nine. We're all just, like, taking into the fact that we're back home. Life is way different here and over there, so obviously yeah. it's different it's like a different vacation high from the other kind of trips that i've done yeah when you go down like in the caribbeans or whatever it's not the same yeah thing. when i come back here i feel the same or whatever it's like yeah. more like i'm missing the sun type of yeah. thing but that was like it was it was something else so we spent a little under two weeks but it felt like forever for good reasons mm. not like we had a sh we actually had no we encountered no issues whatsoever it was a it was a cool um smooth sailing and um so we first arrived in portugal yeah, uh, we all have mixed feelings of Portugal. What would you guys rate it on 10? 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I love Portugal. Of course, of course she loves Portugal. <laughs> I love Lisbon. Lisbon has my heart. Yeah, oh. literally has your heart oh and my God. your children. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we obviously, it was nice seeing uh, uh cousin was there. Yeah. He yeah. plays soccer over there, so it was nice seeing him and going around the city. Yeah. My, I would say like uh, seven out of ten. Me too. It's just not. It's just not my kind of crowd. So yeah, I just give like a seven out of ten too. Going out scene. I love like the speakeasies, the bars, the hole in the wall places that we, you could just, you just walk down the street and find something, and there was always people. Mm -hmm. You know. So, um, and then after that, we went to Palma de Mallorca. Yeah, direct flight to Palma de Mallorca. Where we spent um, close to a week, yeah. six days or so. When fell in love. We had a beautiful place. Shout out to. Manuel. The boy Manuel. Manuel um, much love. He's from Montreal and he he knew that we were going to Mallorca and he gave us a place to stay right by the water. Made you know, made it so easy to just stay awake or wake up at seven in the morning to see the sunrise. Or just or not, not sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I mean, Matt slept. Yeah, I was about to say, well, I, for the most part. I mean I'm getting called out if I sleep too much. <laughs> I'm getting called out. Just, just so I know, Look, these guys. He's, he's still, he's still recovering. <laughs> these guys <laughs> like to not sleep, and the main problem is definitely Sergio, because Sergio loves doing activities, twenty eight hours on twenty four. <laughs> so like, if it's time to go to sleep, and we just haven't done much in the last two hours, we did so much during the day, but in the last two hours, we're kind of effy. You're getting called out. Sergio's gonna be like, "Why the fuck are we going to sleep?" Yeah. Can we Bro, do something? we're on vacation. Like we're on. <laughs> like we're so traveling. We're so far from home. There's no way you're gonna catch me scrolling on fucking TikTok. I agree, but when you have 20 hours total trip in 14 I'll days sleep. I'll of sleep, sleep, when I'm dead. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> right? If I didn't sleep during the day, shut the <laughs> fuck up, oh, Carl. Shut up. <laughs> Carl, Carl is, is officially the worst co-pilot ever. <laughs> oh my days! This guy yeah. is sleeping. He will call you out of. Us sleeping too much in a bed, but during the day, we'll find any place to sleep, sleep. and sleep in the car. and Sleep on the sofa, sleep in the car, sleep everywhere. But not when it's time for bed? No. No. Uh, uh, my favorite thing that we did while we were in Mallorca was definitely visiting Dea. I, I took it upon myself to be like, you know what? If there's a place that we're going to be doing wine tasting, it's here. Let's, let's dent the bank. 
Dent the Bank. Dent the Bank, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that damn margarita, bro. Yeah, I was about to yeah. say. I, th- I thought it was page 23, but it was 23 euro for this thing. 23 euro. You, sp- you spent $35 on, on a, a margarita. M- a margarita. A normal yeah. margarita. Yeah. Yeah. But well, service was good. was good, huh? Service was insane also. Service was insane. The view was incredible. The experience, yeah. the experience as a whole was was great. One of the main things that I told myself that I was going to do is that I was just going to try like a bunch of different foods. I I absolutely want to do a lot of wine tasting throughout Europe. Don't ask me why, but this past year my trip has been wine. Mm. You got a nose for it. Like it's like you know what you want. Wow. What? <laughs> 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 literally, <laughs> wow. literally and figuratively speaking yeah I do have a nose for it <laughs> uh, I'm saying like it's good because I can't do this shit. see if I put my nose in this bitch like, I can't I can't it's too big uh, no you that have would, be hard to believe yeah, yeah, yeah. if anything fuck. you could still smell the grapes fermenting bro <laughs> 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 um, yeah but loved it I loved I, I think what I liked the most is that I loved going into places and having wine that's local yeah Mm. Do you know what I mean? Except like the like the main ones that are always like here in the restaurants in Montreal. I always like trying new things. Food as well. We went to um, one of the first. No, it was in, we, in Portugal. We went to this nice restaurant where we had burrata. Oh, one of the so best. Good. Yeah, yeah. One of the best that I ever had. What I what I had what I yeah, had pizza. Oh, yeah. You yeah. We're at a beautiful restaurant. Man, them decides to eat a pizza. Yeah, yeah. It was like carne something pizza. Carne yeah, asada. Was it like good? That. Yeah. 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 Um so then so then we did that. We stayed we stayed a little bit in Mallorca. We did Dea, beautiful experience, loved it. And then we did a last minute uh a split second decision to go to Madrid. Before that, a what? Split uh, we went to Oh, we went cliff jumping. Cliff jumping, oh. yes. True, we went cliff jumping. Well, me and Matt went cliff jumping. Yeah. Matt went Cliff suiciding because that, that bro, jump. bro they were so high first. And by the way, the <laughs> fucking little like a group of Italian people on the boat antagonizing us to yeah. jump. Yeah, they're like, it's only 10 feet high, bro. My, buddy, it was my 30, dick bro. was 10 feet high. No, it's not 10 feet, it's way, it was way high, uh, bro. The fact that I'm able to swing my hands like two or three times before hitting the water, it, uh, that's wild. It, it was, it was pretty high, but we have to uh, shout out to you though. You, you took some nice videos though, yeah. So. Hmm. Shout out to you, but he didn't I, jump. No, he didn't why, jump. why didn't you jump? Now, look, black people don't jump. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted him to say it, bro. I see a cliff, I see what I'm not jumping. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> he, he literally just said to us, That's white people, shit. <laughs> and I was like, Honestly, it's definitely see, my white side doing this. See, so the, uh, you know, the boat, the Italian boat, they were like, Hey, con, hey, con. Yeah, yeah. oh my god. So these see? guys, okay, <laughs> they saw me, they saw Matt jump first, they saw me jump, and then they, they knew that Carl was with the group right yeah. so they start antagonizing carl and they start singing akon yeah and, I was and like, then they start see, they start chanting akon 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 yeah. it's icing you to jump and, I was and like, you were just like nah if there's no they're not gonna gaslight me to jump bro i was like yeah yeah and then they came they met us on the cliff yeah. and they jumped no problem 30 feet high yeah but that was a second cliff you know we jumped from the first from cliff one, yeah and even then you know, I was skeptical. I didn't want to go, whatever. And then the the second, the cliff, second cliff was fucked. I, I I walked next to it, and I was like, "No one is jumping from here. That's not even the cliff, right?" And then we went to the actual cliff. Yeah. And then these guys come out the boat, come up, seven guys just. You remember I told you I just hear. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. I'm like, is the these next. motherfuckers jumping, man? Look, I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, no, yeah, I have to do it. I that I have to do but it. But for me, it was the delay, like from seeing them jump before they hit the water. Yeah. That like it was from really high up. And I'm someone that like I have difficulties with like heights and shit. Uh-huh. Which is, kind of sounds ironic because I like love roller coasters and yeah. skyscrapers and stuff. So anyways. Oh good. Okay. But jumping from there but honestly, I did much better than I thought I was going to do. I thought it was gonna take me a lot more time to to jump off the cliffs. Mm-hmm. But I just had to just like literally throw myself off and just in order to do it yeah basically. if i would have stayed at the ledge too long and looked down for like yeah, no a worries. second longer i would have backed out but the second cliff that was me i didn't look yeah you just i went. just i just i said three seconds and then i yeah. jumped right away Fuck and then, but once you do it once like it gets less and less hard to jump off the cliff yeah like when we did it afterwards two three times it was just like clockwork yeah uh, 
the swim, the, the swim <laughs> the was fact that we had, we had to swim all the way around after was more tiring than the cliff jumping itself. Honestly, I think it takes like 15 minutes to go back all the way up. Easily. 15? And what, yeah, because yeah. the, and the, the current is bringing you away from the land too. Oh. So you're swimming against the current and you have to go around. And you oh. jumped and you're tired. And you're and jumped and like the adrenaline is going down too. We had, for some reason, we're like, yeah, let's drive two hours, not bring food or water and we'll be fine. Yeah, I was on the beach watching a bunch of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and just people jumping. Dead ass. Yeah. But, it, no but that was really fun. Bro, though. the last meal we had was at 12 the day before. Yeah, what meal, bro? We and had like a... The, the oh, yeah, kebab yeah, yeah. thing. Isn't it that... Was it that day? The kebab remember. thing? I Whatever. Know. And then the, our first meal oh, were at 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, this Carl guy was... cheese. was cheese. Oh, cheese so the word. I he mean, was angry. I was so hungry. <sighs> Anyways, so then after we, what about the nightlife in Palma? Do we, did we even go out in Palma? Magaluf. We went out every night. Oh, Magaluf. Yeah. We went out. We were there during the week, so it made sense. We mm. left afterwards. Magaluf we spent the weekend right. there too. Yeah. Uh, Ma no, Magaluf is Magaluf is okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of that one club where like everyone has like um oh, oh my, my days. <laughs> it was the club that was bumping the most. You have BCM where it's like you have BCM where it's like a different crowd yeah. where it's like more like like high end and stuff like that which was which looked sick mm. and then everywhere else was just like trashy trashy Very trash trashy. here. Yeah. It was super Irish. Yeah, super a Irish. A lot Irish of British people. people a lot yeah. of Irish. A lot of like a lot of Irish locals were but, working and promoting the clubs there. But they know how to party. They were all drunk. Yeah, as shit. Mm. absolutely. There was other places that like were further in Palma, but like because it, like for us it was a little bit of a drive. It didn't seem like it was that worth much it. worth it to go. Magaluf was like right next door. Um, first night that we went to Magaluf, I, I got tatted. I told myself before going into the trip. Remember. I said that that I was gonna get a tattoo. Mm. Ended up getting two. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're nice though. Still. It was worth yeah. It. yeah, it was definitely. It was worth it. it was nice because like this whole trip was kind of like that, and we'll get into it. We'll get into that later. It was just more like just doing things, not like, thinking too much. Yeah, like just go off the rip, you know. <laughs> and and I mean, even connecting with the ta tattoo artist was mad chill. Mm. Uh, you know, we spoke, we connected, created some content. It was it was fun. We really connected with him, and he was a really cool guy. That I wanted to go and see him one for the tattoo, but also just to just to talk, like be, just talking to like locals and stuff like that. You get a different perspective on a lot of things, you know. Uh, but what would you guys rate Mallorca overall? Ten. Uh, seven point. I don't. Nine. I think you missed out the 10 part. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course it was a no, 10. No, 10, 10, uh, is, 10 is nice. 10. So that so that was when we went out to Palma. Actually, when we went out, we did go out uh, in the city as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Like the underground, <laughs> like, like cave. That was so nice. And it we also really nice saw your place. friends. Also. So that's an interesting thing. Like when you get older, it's like you're no longer traveling like with just with, with family. And like doing like all inclusive stuff. So like now that we're older and people are you know making their own money and stuff, you kind of start to see other people traveling at the same time, and you actually end up like connecting mm -hmm. along the way, which I found was. Interesting. But it's also like who you hang out with, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like let's say for example, like my other group of friends, like I don't see myself being able to do that because they're living like a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But once you are around or you're you know you have acquaintances that are also traveling, then like. It's cool to just be like, hey, like, do you want to meet up and, yeah. and do something? You guys meet up in a different island. It's yeah. crazy around the world. Like, oh, hello. Yeah. Met up met up in Palma, went for dinner, drank way too much wine. It, wait, bro, my head. I was, I had a oh headache. Like, Carl, 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 even Carl loved yeah. it. Yeah. The wine was good, yeah. I thought, wait, it was wine? Yeah, it was wine. Wasn't it, was it like champagne? No. No, no, no. Champagne would have been even worse, bro. And no, I wasn't was understanding it at first. I, I didn't know how there was always a bottle of wine just magically appearing. Uh, uh, all the time. And he yeah. tried a lot of food, and the food it was not his type of food. Which Definitely not. Nice. I was surprised, too. Jesus yeah. Christ. There was, a lot of what, 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 there was a lot of what the fuck is that. Right. True. For you. But, even, no, but even for me, bro. Squid I, I, ink? Like, squid ink, that was, that's crazy. Yeah. For me, even me, I was like, this is my stop. Like, yeah. Did you try it? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tried everything else. <laughs> me, too. Squid ink was my stop. Did you try the truffle? 
Truffle? That was, it was at a different restaurant, but did you end up trying the truffle? No, the truffle was on your guys' uh, spaghetti or something like that. No, it was on, the, it was on my burrata. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. Oh, yeah, it doesn't like taste anything. Is that know, like whatever. chocolate? No, what? it's chocolate truffle. Oh, fuck. But it doesn't taste anything. It was whatever. Anyways, and then after Palma. After Palma, we took a last-minute decision trip to Madrid. Mm-hmm. Because, so this is the thing. Life happens in mysterious ways. Mm. Obviously, for those of you who might not know, so we're actually partnered up with Nivea, and they are partnered with Real Madrid. And while we were there, I was like, yo, we're in Spain. Let me just ask. So I hit up the, our representative. Shout out, Melissa. Shout out, Melissa. Shout out, Mel. Um, and we were trying to see like what games were going to be a possibility. She's like, oh, you just missed a Champions League game. And I was like, fuck. Great. She's like, but we actually can't attend like we can't like um no what'd she say she said oh we actually can't be with you guys on the next game that we have available but we actually have three tickets that we might be able to get for you guys mm. so i was like please make that happen <laughs> ends up coming back saying yeah sure uh we're gonna give you guys the vip experience i said vip who say less say no more and then that was an crazy experience it was definitely something that i've been i've been talking about this like the last few months like i want to go see uh messi play mm. in, in miami and i've always wanted to go see like either a barcelona game or a real madrid game and the fact that we actually were able to be there be there in the lounges be there in the vip section having the the best seats was like i, I if i were to die on that day i would have been like you know what it's okay fulfilled the, the ambience was insane. The stadium was humongous. The, the, the ambience was crazy. The crowd cheering. Crowd from left. The crowd Palma. And yeah. They were like antagonizing sh- one another. It was crazy. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Madrid, even if it for one day, I'd say like a good eight nine. Yeah. Madrid was like the was like from Madrid onwards. Yeah, but for you, it was different. Though. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I, so for those of you who don't know, again, uh, I have family in Madrid. I don't have much family here. I have my mom, my dad, I have, and I have aunts. But my family here is very small, if more so like on the Portuguese side. And going to Spain, I knew I had family. So I, hit up my, I asked my dad, I'm like, hey, like, is there any family members that are there that I can go see? Long story short, I ended up being able to see my uncle. And it was out of the blue. And I'm the type of person to kind of sometimes, like, like I think everybody's a victim to this, to be like, oh, like I want to do this and then like not follow through with mm. it. And the fact that like I said it and like stuck to it and actually got to meet him was one of the, if not the best experience that I had during the whole trip. I finally got the sense of like, this is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Like seeing him, I'm like, I see now the way that I walk Mm -hmm. comes from, (laughs) comes from him. Crack it energy, man. The crack it energy as well. And you you know what I allowed myself to do? Cause like, I, yes, don't get me wrong. I do know how to speak Spanish. Mm. I, I just always feel no, like no, I'm no, not. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, Sergio, Sergio oh knows days. how to speak Spanish, but he's very selective. There are some days that apparently he doesn't know how to speak Spanish. I have, a, a worker comes to me, starts speaking Spanish on something very important. My car broke down, whatever it is. And I'm like, Sergio, can you translate? And he's like, I, I don't. It's because I want I you guys to learn. Like, shut, shut up. Learn. My shut guy was talking. He was so fast with everything. So whatever. I was like, ah. yo, he's so select. Sometimes he's like, uh, and then answer in English. And I'm like, the person doesn't speak English. Otherwise, I would have taken the lead. <laughs> Can you speak Spanish? I'm not. Listen. And then uncle comes in. And Uncle doesn't give a single choice to, to Sergio. Spanish only. And Sergio's like, I'm like, me and Carl in the back seats were like, huh. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> now he speaks Spanish. <laughs> but no, that was not, you know, what was the point that at some point he did it and me and you were like, oh, this fucker. Literally. I forgot that yeah. moment, but me and Carl, we, lo- we looked at each other. We're like, well, this fucking Sergio. Now apparently he wants to speak Spanish. Fuck, what was it? Was that at the airport? I don't know, but it was something like that. Like he d- he decided that now he, for four or five times in a, in a row, I was like, Sergio, can you like translate it for me? He's like, no, or he'll speak just in English. And in that one moment, I don't know what was it, decided to speak Spanish fluently, no problem whatsoever. And then I looked at you, I was like, this shit is so fucking selective. It pisses me off. I it was it was more so like if I was talking to like locals and stuff like that, I would start speaking in Spanish just for like the sake of getting to know people and just talking. Yeah. But when it came to just like 
irrelevant things, I didn't feel the need to want to speak. I, also, I was selective because sometimes I like I like them. Not I like people you. assuming that I, we don't understand Spanish, and then I know. Yeah. And then you use that like against them. Yeah, because yeah. they use it to a certain degree. Yeah, a bunch of times the girls are like, "Oh, nice yeah, yeah we're, going, we're coming to this. Don't yeah. say that. We're going, we're going to yeah. this." <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then spending the time with him. So Madrid, we literally stayed there for less than 24 hours. Literally. literally. And I, it's the place that I spent the least amount of time in, but it was actually the place that made me want to spend the most amount of time in. Mm. Like my, my, so I spent the entire day with my uncle. We did our haircuts. We weren't yeah, you guys went, were, were doing your things. We met up later. But just in that, in, that, in that period that I spent with him, he showed me the whole city. And I'm obviously big like on architecture and history and stuff like that and madrid had so much of it that it seemed like you could live there let's say like six months out of the year and still not be there long enough to mm. be able to do everything mm. just in madrid just well let alone just that strip that we did and he brought me to the park we went to an art exposition and Man. he was really just trying what the f- hello yeah <laughs> what the fuck yeah, pictures. <laughs> we were out there just getting our haircuts well, yeah, yeah and waiting but it was longer than that like it was, it was quite a few hours but anyways long story short um, we spent we spent some time with him and it was really like a definitive moment for me because I was just like I wanted to also take that opportunity to just like practice my Spanish you know so rather than like pretend like I knew f- you know full on Spanish and stuff I would I, I allowed myself to just be like I don't know Spanish to the degree that I want to know so every now and then I'd be like how do you say such and such a thing in Spanish and at first, like, I didn't want to ask because, like, I, for some reason, I had the fear of being judged mm-hmm. or whatever. I ended up just saying, fuck it. And it was so nice to just realize that there was nothing to it, that he didn't say anything. He didn't make fun of me or... It's or family. Exactly. Well, yeah. let alone family, but just, like, it's not... It's not. It's a, it, it's more like a Western thing mm. Mm. to shame someone, especially with cancel culture and stuff like that. To there, it was just, like... A, a moment that we were bonding, mm. you know, and I feel like it would have been the same even with just like a local random taxi driver. But it's true when we're doing our hair, our haircuts, you you say your your sentence, "Tu eres mus uh, bonita" or whatever, and then the, as the, soon as I said that, the, 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 the barber, he was like, "You speak Spanish?" I was like, "Yeah, a little bit." <laughs> and you <laughs> told him, "Tu eres like, bonita." Like, what do you know? I'm, I look at him. No, I didn't look at him like that. I said, uh, "Tu eres muy bonita." My, my guy was laughing. laughing, bro. He was laughing. I was like, yeah, that's my line. And it was like <laughs> such good vibes and yeah. whatever. He, but it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a really cool experience. And just a, the last thing, it's going to sound really weird, but it's just like how I know like I overthink things, but in a good way. Like I don't just see things at a surface level like, oh, I'm traveling. We go see my uncle. We're going to spend the day and that's it. It was more so like how I was feeling. Like I love to go in depth on how I'm feeling emotionally and mentally and, and how this is like impacting me, right? And to me, it just really felt cool. Like I think going back to like my, like when I was younger and I'm like, I'm like the last child and to my parents divorce. Like I think we, we did an episode on that where I always feel like I was teeter-tottering between the two and not really knowing who I am and stuff like that. And spending time with him made me feel like like these are let alone my people, but like my I really feel like true like my family is mm, here. Yeah. You know, and like if ever I were to feel like I am who I am is with the people that resemble me the most. Mm-hmm. You know? And that are even though like we've never been apart and I've grown up more like in a Western society and then more so like in the European world, that our energies are still very much so aligned and our personalities for some reason. Same same person you know you guys are the same so i really really enjoy that aspect and then after madrid after the barcelona game um we flew to barcelona Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) no no yeah barcelona was so the first part of our trip was like very like you know relax like food wine uh visiting the cities and stuff like that and then barcelona was just (laughs) Fucking mayhem. <laughs> Bro, Barcelona, wait, wait, wait. Barcelona is way different from all the cities. It's just Put a vibe. Home. Love it. How would, what would you? Ten. 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 Barcelona is nice. Barcelona <laughs> was really great. Ten, but ten for, ten, the reason why it's a ten for me is just like by the end of the trip, where I was mentally mm. was so, um, was so like eye-opening that like it just made it that it's a 10. Okay. I agree. You know, most definitely. There wasn't like anything like definitive that necessarily happened in particular. It was just like being there in Barcelona was like after so many days of traveling 
and just like seeing the culture and having different perspectives and stuff like that, it really it, it, it really plays with the mind after a while, you know? Yeah. But like, let's say for me, like let's say Palma for me was a 10 because it's beautiful and yeah. like the waters and then Barcelona, more like the people, you know, when you, yeah. I was just, the video I took, like I, I'm outside and we had this big street and then it's fucking 1, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and then just people are walking. Yeah. Everyone is vibing. Don't sleep over there. Yeah, like sleep is optional over yeah. there. Like that's really like yeah, what? And and uh, and uh, <laughs> what? What? The, why you say it like that? Because it's optional because of you, most definitely. Yeah. It, obviously, optional. The last night was on him. The last night, like I had given up. I'm like, you know what? We went out two days in a row. And the the last day, I was like, okay, Matt doesn't want to go out. Carl was just didn't say anything he wasn't not not down mm. but we weren't gonna just go out two guys yeah. so I mean, we could have we so then i'm like <laughs> yeah what? but I'm, I'm getting called out for 50 minutes as, saying as you did you did you grow this did as you, you should did, <laughs> as you should, as you should. And then me and bro Carl, wait 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 i have to say to the people why if i'm saying no most of the time if i don't want to go out it's because the clubs over there close at six and you guys want to go out to six but then we have a flight at seven yeah. This is the vibe with these two. And this dude, dude, he says, Matt, we'll go for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I said, I, said, I said an hour. Okay, realistically, an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, and I said, shut the fuck up. If we're going out, I know it's not going to be an hour for an half. And this guy was just calling me a pussy the whole time. It was already like 12.30. We had just finished oh having supper. Yeah. yeah. And then 12.30 comes. I'm like, All right, you know what? Let me at least go and get snacks for tomorrow's flight. So me and Carl, we go, <laughs> we go to have snacks, right? We we go to buy our stuff. Carl looks at the alcohol shelf and he goes, "Hmm." <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I don't give a fuck, Sergio. <laughs> We're going We're out going tonight." Out. <laughs> I look at him. I say, "Don't fucking tempt me because <laughs> I will go home and get dressed right fucking now if you're telling me you want to go out." And then well, we we saw we saw the bottle of uh, Jack whatever. We took it. Took the. What was the chaser we had? Coke. Coke. Yeah. Took Coke and then, no, no, we didn't take Coke like that. We took Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> and then, bah. Then we're like, yo, Matt, just, just one hour. <laughs> I'll, buy you, I'll buy you breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> right? And then whatever, after like teeter-tottering, um, the vibe started picking up. And then Matt was like, oh, I don't want to hear this. When we get back to Montreal, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> The sides to tag along, and before we before we leave again, Carl's like, "Yo, yo, Serge, another yeah. bottle, <laughs> another <laughs> bottle." And then it ended up being like a really, really good time. Yeah, and I, and good I'm night. sure you were happy that you ended up going. Yeah, through. it was just awesome yeah. night, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my fault. <laughs> I'm laughing alone. Um, uh, talking about when we were walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the end of <laughs> yeah. the, the the cherry on. So how thing. was like? So how was like the clubbing scene? Did you guys like it? It was great. A good, a good uh, 15 out of 10. 15 out of 10. Bro, bro I, you know, no disrespect. To, well, I, I don't give a fuck. It's my job. I'm going to go out here and I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. What side the eye. fuck is going side on? Side eye, left and right. Side eye. Bro, people over there don't give a fuck. Everyone, like you just said it, everyone just parties, have fun, drinking. It's not like, it's not trashy. It's just very like vibes. Yeah. Everyone is having fun. Yeah. Everyone is cool. Everyone is chilling. So I really loved it for it. Um, and music. It's big. Yeah, it's so the big. Clubs are they're, humongous. They're, they're huge. They're hu they're, they're, not only are they huge, but they get filled up. Yes. Also, yeah. You you go out. It's two, three, and there's still a fucking line. What's well, the second on. wave, right? We yeah. went. To, we went to. Uh, we went uh, to the downtown portion of Barcelona one night, and we were there early for the bottle service. And then we came back. There was a second wave of people coming mm. in at one thirty. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so I think like the first half was really like more cool, calm, and collective, chill. Yeah. yeah. Right. More food and stuff like that. And then the clubbing is like. And then the second half was more so like guys, oh. we're coming to the end of our trip. Crack it. Let's. Have Let's fun. do some damage and get into some debt. And then Matt cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Sergio is like... I was like, yo, Matt, another an another bottle. one, uh, two thirty, <laughs> And I'm like, 30. Sergio, I will fight you before we <laughs> order another fucking bottle. <laughs> We're not ordering an another bottle. Hey, listen, I had the, the bottles, the shisha. The shisha, bro. The shisha, me and him, bro, were... <laughs> bro. You guys suck that shit up. That's I crazy. fucked it up, but you did that shit worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
bro, how do you say you're a fucking shimmy bro? Ha- I have lung cancer for sure. Oh yeah, my so days! By the end of the night, my throat was killing me though. But I have to say, usually me for shisha, I I took like I take just two yeah, three puffs, puffs and I'm yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. No, which no. you're just, and then at some point I wanted to stop, and then he did like, yeah, your turn. Take it, bro. Well, somebody had to take it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was giving it out to people because I'm like, yo, somebody needs to to, to hop on it because otherwise I I'm gonna fucking die. And then uh, last night in Barcelona, um, last a, night in Barcelona, yeah, we had a, like an encounter that was very funny. Carl, you oh came geez, to the honors. To, you uh, came to the so you, well, you just explain it. You'll get so basically before that night. We saw some girls that were just working the streets, I'm guessing. Literally. And then yeah, we literally. just like avoided them. Second night, the we saw them again. Same crew. But same no, crew. No, same, same crew, but bigger. No, yes. no, there were some there no. were some new girls. Same crew, but bigger. Yeah, they were yeah. No, was, first night was actually um girls. And but the second night there were girls too. They were okay, but the last night was not girls. The last night what there were girls no, too. No, no. Some of them weren't girls. I they mean, were bro, guys. They, bro, they're um Sergio, they were. I think they were girls with dicks. Okay, anyways. Girls with dicks, bro. Okay, good to <laughs> bro, is, is she's taller and beefer than me, bro. <laughs> and the way she, well, explain. Longer limbs than you two. Everything. <laughs> bro, one of them was like 6'4. You're talking about that. The girls, no disrespect mm. if you're 6'4 and you're a girl, but listen, there's almost beard and everything, bro. But no, no, no. <laughs> the, the, so this, just, is, so this just, is leaving the club. So we're just walking, and then there's that one girl that sees Matt. And then she just no no hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. it was the f- it was the funniest thing ever. I <laughs> walked swear to with God. me aggressive as shit like oh papi come home for you is gratis for you is gratis, <laughs> it was gratis. and I'm like no thank you like really appreciate it thank you baba and then when she stopped she just pow up my ass <laughs> like I'm some bitch bro oh my days bro like the, <laughs> but, the, the but movement just... was this. <laughs> but when I tell guys when I tell you that Matt didn't even look back and just walk <laughs> it was like the walk of shame and then yeah, and then comes go, Carl's God. turn Jesus I was see I saw all of this going on I, I backed up a bit I was like yeah you guys handle whatever and there's there was that one girl that <laughs> saw me starts and walking she, up she to you she walks up to you super fast she's like oh papi papi she starts touching the fuck out of me I'm like I'm like nah I'm good I'm no, good no before she even gets to touch yeah. you bro she was touching me and everything no before, no, before. The, 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 the you fucking yeah, ankle yeah, yeah, broke yeah. Look, look look and then and then um, uh, and then we're walking we're walking and then there's like a bus stop right Yeah. and you guys are walking on the left side I'm like on the right side and then I'm like yo I'm a juker. And then like, she just walks on the left side. I stop on the right side. I do this. And then I go back. And then she turns the corner of the bus stop. She's like, yeah. where's Poppy? <laughs> where's Poppy? And then I'm like, yeah. I start running to you guys. I'm like, gotcha. <laughs> But it was funny because even they started laughing. <laughs> oh <laughs> my, my days! Bro. I was like, "Gotcha, you got you." Like, oh, oh my god, it was funny, well, bro. The hilarious. girls working the streets over there are so aggressive. Oh my days, bro! Every night that we went, well, even in Magaluf, they tell Carl, "You want sucky, sucky?" <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Sucky, sucky. I was like, I hey, shit, wait, 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 hold on, pause. There's, there's a night that me and Carl went out. <laughs> And we pass in front of this place, right? With massage. And obviously they give happy endings, right? <laughs> we see two dudes walk out of there. And Carl turns to one and says, yo, do they give sucky sucky? <laughs> do they give sucky sucky in there? The guy doesn't understand a word of English. And then Carl goes, do they suck dick? <laughs> and the smile that the other guy had on his face was he just was priceless. So happy. I was like, yo, did he give head? You're like, they were like, man, like huh? we see that man them afterwards at the pizza at the pizza place, just like post nut fucking oh, munchies. And then we passed by again, and he went back to yeah. it. Yeah, he oh. was going back of my days. But it was funny. And oh. then, and then what else? Um, so after yeah, partying and stuff aside, fantastic, a lot, <laughs> lot of fun. Carl had a little bit too much fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody told Doja Cat. <laughs> um, and then what What was the night that we just like chilled was it before the, going it's out it's the night before the last night you talk about going and on a, also the, the walk. last night no it was the last night 
We, because we were saying, oh, it's our last night. True. It was before wow. we went clubbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was before we went clubbing. Before yeah, we went yeah. clubbing, yeah. True. Right. Because so, it was already late. Yeah. So to like, you know, party and travel and all those things was were, was fun. But I think the impact that this trip had on us is something that nobody could have been like actually like pay for mm-hmm. to learn from someone else. Like it's really something that you genuinely have to experience. And I got to say... I've traveled with these guys before, and when we were going into this trip, I had complete different expectations. I was like, you know, we're gonna be like cutting corners and like, you know, we're gonna be like living on a budget type thing. And I was, I was like, you know what, no, no, no stress, because that's what I thought, mm-hmm. right? Um, but now, obviously, we're at a different time of our lives, and with the podcast and everything we got going on, you guys completely surprised me. Um, and I think for the most part, it was kind of just fun to see like a different side from you guys, like a more relaxed, even I would, I, would, I would even say like a more like mature approach to um, how we went about the trip, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I'm going to say, I, I spoke about this off cam to, to Matt, but the way that I saw it from my perspective, seeing you guys. So Matt, you're obviously someone who overthinks a lot and deals with anxiety and stuff like that. And just seeing how, when I would be like, Oh, like, uh, like we should go to this place or I saw this place. And I want to do that because I'm someone when I travel, I like to make itineraries, mm. right? I love before we go, I kind of like plan more or less how the whole trip went. And if there's changes along the way, no sweat, I'm on vacation. Fuck it. But I love having like some kind of idea of knowing like what's there, what we could visit and stuff like that. And at first I was like, I was like a little bit like resistant on like suggesting places because it was going to cost X or it was going to be far or whatever. And to everything that I was pitching to you guys, it was just Sergio, don't ask us. It's a yes, yeah. you know. And even once there, you guys were like, "Let you guys want to do that," and I was like, "Shit, damn! All right." Mm. Um, so, I think just seeing you going more so with the flow, not caring at all, you know, time, money, anxiety, whatever it was not a question, was really interesting, and it's not something that I was used to seeing. And for Carl, I think I think for for both of us we saw you mature a lot mm. in this trip mm-hmm. from from a, from more or less the same reasons of also like not giving a fuck already that you don't give a fuck when you're here it was more so like you cared even less about doing things mm. you said I'm going to go ask and you would just go and ask <laughs> rather than being like oh I'm going to go ask turning around and being like I don't, like je vais pas me you know, like you were just doing things, and I was, it, I was surprised, and it just made it for like, like a really interesting experience, and also just being down to do whatever. And if I'm being honest, I like, I, like overhearing your conversation with your mom also impacted me, where she was just like, "Guys, go have fun." You know, it's kind of like this thing that we always say: money comes and goes, but experiences mm. are here to stay. Yeah. And I kind of felt like after that, there was like, uh, like a declic. Yeah. For you, mm-hmm. and you're just like, fuck it. I think it was just, <clears throat> it was mostly like the fact that I was always like, oh, do I really want this? Maybe not. Maybe this is that. But my mom, every time I called her to just like uh, update her, update her, basically, she was always like, oh, okay, are you guys going to London? I was like, London. I was like, what? Mm. Why, would we, why would we go to London? She's yeah. like, okay, are you guys going to Paris or are you guys going there, there, and there? I was like, no, mom, we're just staying in Spain. And then she's like, uh, you guys are in Europe. You guys should travel and actually do everything since since you're there. You know, yeah. just spend whatever and just do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And as soon, as soon as she said that to me, I think I realized I was like, you know what? We actually have one life to live, so we might as well just actually just do whatever we want to do, spend on whatever we want to spend, yeah. and just enjoy the time we have over there. Because afterwards, we. I'd like not to regret anything over 100%. there, you know. So I'm just like, I'm just like, I did everything I wanted to do. So yeah, that's what I. I was it's also like for. you don't know exactly when it is the, the next time that you're going to be going to Spain, true, right, true. or anywhere for that mm-hmm. matter, right? So it was it was just really cool. After I mean, you were already like that at the beginning, but I think like you just went even more, like 110 mm-hmm. percent into the trip after the after that phone call, and um, it, I th- I think we could all say that there's no amount of money that you could regret spending. No. True. After exactly. after what we were able to experience there, right? Matt, I was about to say for him, like what I realized with you, it was like, you know when sometimes like you get pissed off of like little things and usually you stay stuck up to it like for a long time. Mm-hmm. But like now it was kind of very different. It's like it pisses you off. You're stuck up for it for like maybe like an hour and then we're actually like seeing you back on track 
after yeah. like an hour and a half or two. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like you did that. Like the, the first time for me was like Nikki Beach that I was actually surprised because it was like, I know you were pissed at first. And you came back yeah. to it. After yeah. That. And then when we went in the water, you became this little fucking fish or whatever. And I was like, wow, he's like, he's back on track. I was actually very happy. Like, I was like, nice. Like, you know, and then you did that like multiple times during the, the trip of like, that's true. Something annoying you. And then you just didn't keep it like hold uh, grudges. Is yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hold grudges for that long. Usually you keep it like almost the whole day or so or mm-hmm. until you go to the gym. But then now it's just like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot easier. Um, but then going back to that to that last night in Barcelona was when we kind of just were realizing that the trip was coming to an end. It was also like the the only time that we just had the time to just chill and do nothing. Mm. Yeah. You know, obviously before going out. <laughs> but but before it was always like okay like we have to go eat because after that like we're going out mm. or we have to go eat because after that like we, we got to go to such such a place and that was one of the night where we just decided hey let's go grab something to eat walked in, walked out the market and just you know sat down ate and the, you could you, you could tell that the mood was just starting to change amongst us we weren't talking to each other not because we were moody but just like we're kind of like in our own minds everyone was literally in our minds you know we weren't even like we weren't on our phones. We were just eating and like each having our own thought process. And I think for the th- reasons that we all just highlighted, I think like that's what was playing in our minds while we were just eating. And for me, you know, being in being in Montreal, and I think for anybody that lives in their own city understands this, like me for the longest time, like it started when I was like 21, 22, I never like really felt like Montreal was like my place. Mm. Mm. I think like for every year that I've met you guys, you guys have always heard me saying like, like I'm out of here. Whether it's LA, Miami, Dubai, like I just, don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, it's, it's it's just my uh, Montreal is not where I want to be spending the majority of my life in. And once we were in Spain on that bench, and I was just kind of like seeing people pass by constantly, nobody looking at me, like not like it just felt like I was like alone, mm-hmm. you know. And I had like that moment of just like peace. And the fact that no one knew me, no one was batting an eye at me or like there's a potential of somebody that you might see and have to do small talk was just like a little moment of bliss, Mm -hmm. you know? And the most interesting thing to me is like, I'm looking around afterwards, right? And I'm like, what is it about this place that's making me feel that type of way? And you know, what's making me see a different perspective? I'm looking at people and everyone's at least in a minimum of group of two, three or more. But everyone is talking to one another. Mm -hmm. You were saying like the the, the earphones thing, and then yeah, you, I'm like, you asked me. You're like, try to find someone. No, because you said you asked. You're like, like, wh- like, why is it that there's so many people that are out at this time? Mm. And I said, if you look around, do you see anybody on their phone? Do you see anybody with headphones? No, everyone is like vibing, having Listen. fun, and I think that's because we're a very like sociable person. Let's put it this way, and then the fact that we're in like in a place that like everyone is just happy like the the what's trend v like the the, the way the way of life. of life yeah the way of life like people it's everything is like slower yeah. and also to mention what you just said that's why i didn't do anxiety over there because mm. i think like here it's like so like go 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 that this piece. needs to be done everything it's like so stressful right maybe that's why i do anxiety but over there it's like i don't feel pressured i'm always like just chilling and it's not like you're not doing anything and you're like at the end of your shit and yeah dans le vide, tu that's not what i'm saying it's yeah. just like People are having a wine, talking to each other. When we went to the beach, like everyone, like friends group over there and there, and like no one is judgy, no one is doing like, like everyone is just vibing. And then us, we're just looking with like, like a highlight in our eyes, and we're like, wow, like just looking around shoot. us. Yeah. And that's the thing; it was so funny to kind of see us being quiet and seeing everything happening around us, and everybody amongst themselves are talking, yeah, and are not even giving us the time of day. Mm. Because for them, it's something that's normal. But for us, it's like abnormal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it kind of just made us realize like how disconnected back home we are. And that's kind of why I think I've, I loved Europe so much and why I resonated with it a lot. Because even here, like I'm, I think I'm one of the ones that like every time like I'll see people at the restaurant on their phones or if we're all together, I'm like, well, guys, it's great to be sociable, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, I'll call you guys out often on it. And, it's, and I think it's why it's such a pet peeve of mine. Like if I'm yeah. on a date with someone, like they're on their phone, yeah. even if I'm in a relationship with you and we go on dates, even if like you occasionally go on your phone, it, like it, it just bothers me because I'm like, yo, let, let's just like, Take that for one connect. night, yeah. just like, just be with me. Like, mm. you know, connect with me and get to know me for me. Like, if you want to show me a video and stuff like that, okay, cool. But like, listen, like, no, like, God forbid, no one's going to die in like the one hour and a half that we're on a date. You know what mm. I mean? So just like, just be with me. And I, I, I'm someone who's really big, like, 
on family and especially when it comes time to like spending time with people like we don't get much of that here and the few times that we are we're going to be on our phones mm. and that's why when we went to europe like my notifications were off text messages phone calls and that's it mm. my dms like i i have like i still haven't responded to all of them because i was like listen i'm this is not what i want to be dealing with right now i just want to be present and live in the moment and if there's an emergency anybody who has my number those are the people that i need to be connected with and that's mm. it yeah and the and then leading up to that moment where we went by the boardwalk after by the by the water by the water was where like more like deeper we were going into mm. the same thought process and mind you guys we still weren't really talking I was about, about to say time. like we went deep in a conversation like with having no conversation no um and then like we sat on we sat on the bench and we were just looking and just you know taking the whole trip in and um so like side note i took this trip to really take the time to get to know myself which is why like you know whenever we weren't together i would just go by myself read my book write uh spending a day with my uncle and stuff like that and i don't think there's a time even breakups you know fights or you know my parents divorce i don't think there's been a moment that was more definitive into knowing more so who i am than after this trip mm. and people are going to be like bro relax you went for 12 days but listen mm. you could you get a lot of work done when you're just you by yourself no phone and like oh fuck i was going to bring it but like my journal now especially like in the flight i even wrote some more my journal is full mm. when i tell you guys on that journal i was like like thinking out loud right like i wrote to my exes i wrote to my dad i wrote to my uh to my mom i wrote to everybody about like all the things that i've done wrong to them or all the things that i thought about them or if i was missing someone i was writing like hey i miss you and all these like i was just thinking out loud but like on paper mm -hmm. you know and that was a really really inch and it was not pretty i like, don't get me wrong in the plane it was like you guys didn't get to see cuz we didn't fly back together but the plane was like the deeper side of that process mm -hmm. like where i really got real with with myself the guy next to me was probably like what the fuck is going on Imagine, i'm like the whole time he was just reading and he was like but oh, bro, the flight wait. seven the, the yeah. flight seven hours and a half i watched one movie read a book uh, finished my book and then and then wrote yeah. and the thing is like cuz like the book that i was reading is part of that mm -hmm. And the first, literally, the first chapter took me so long to get through because the, the first chapter is all about uh, getting to know yourself. And there's so many questions that you have to answer, right? And I was answering on that journal, so I have a reference point to go see after. Mm -hmm. And like, it took me so long to get through that part because I realized how much I actually was writing down about myself. It was that questions like, who is Sergio in his private life versus how he is with his public life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like to see the distinguishment for the longest time of how I actually was, was was pretty was pretty pretty enlightening, you know. It's to yeah. see it as a visual, see everything yeah. that you because everything that you have written is like you know it right, but then after when you put it like that and yeah. then you see it, this is where probably you got deeper and you're like damn, like yeah. this is seeing it and writing it. I mean, writing it makes it makes it deeper also, you know. Yeah, compared for sure. to just thinking out loud or just thinking about it. Yeah. Well, that's that's why like this trip was really I was kind of like a it's not I wasn't on this whole like YOLO you only live once mode like yes yeah, sure for one part but not like in the whole like party and get fucked up and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was just more so like I didn't give a fuck about what people were going to judge me for or think or whatever. Like one of the first instances like when we went to the beach and you guys had left, I was just there and there was somebody else offering massages, right? Mm -hmm. And at first I told them no. But then I'm like why the fuck not? And for some reason, I was afraid that people were gonna look at me while I'm getting a massage on the beach. I was gonna look weird or whatever, but I was just like, I I'm I am going to die one day. Mm. And these people are gonna forget about me in two minutes. Mm. And, you know, and and let alone in a year, if they do remember me, like I'm at some point in time, they're, they're gonna forget me, right? Mm, yeah. And I ended up getting the massage. And again, turned out to be one of the best massage that I ever got Randomly. ever, <laughs> you know? And I mean, same thing afterwards, you know, at one point, like while, when we were here before the trip, I was like, you know, soccer scene is going to end. Once soccer scene is over, I'm going to get a pedicure. Mm. And then while we were there, when we had gotten to, to eat, I'm like, yo, Carl, like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go get a pedicure. Mm. And again, just like, just like small things like that, that some, for some people it's like, oh, like relax. But for me, like it took 
a lot to just walk in and just be like, yeah, like I'm, I'm here for pedicure. What's up? Mm. You know, and then realizing that nothing came out of it except a bomb ass pedicure and a foot yeah. massage. I was like, no happy endings. Yeah. What like, was the most like eye opening thing for you during this trip? The more, uh, the most more, like eye opening. More, more, more. The most eye opening. I think. Um, shit. I think for me it was that time when we uh, it was two two moments. At first it was the the church. Mm -hmm. oh, the church yeah. oh my sat. fuck yeah we got in the church uh, in uh in dea and then we literally just took our benches everyone took a bench and we just sat down and just enjoyed the silence the mood was there like yeah. we didn't have to say anything yeah. we all knew like just like well just walking in it's like it was an immediate thing like yeah. we didn't say hey guys let's take five minutes to sit N nothing we mm. walked in split up each mm. took a bench and then silence the yeah. dea is a place that surrounded my mountains and is the city itself is so quiet mm. that going into that church which is even more quiet yeah. i could have sworn i heard my own heartbeat mm. see you know and with obviously like the like the holistic chanting that was happening too <laughs> and it was just right. us three listen i'm not someone who i can't definitively say i believe in god or i believe in this or i believe in something but you go into places like that and you kind of feel forced to believe that there is something, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm fully committed to like, yeah, start believing in religion, but I'm definitely more, and like in, in moments like that and in places like that, you're definitely more open to the idea of, you know, potentially hearing someone who is religious and what they have to say and maybe getting a, a different kind of perspective, you know? Mm, yeah, 100%. I felt the same. It was just uh, so different to just enjoy the silence, you know? Because we're so used to like listening to like, uh, noise all the time people talking all the all the 24 7 mm -hmm. and it was just great and the second moment uh was uh actually the last day on the bench um we we're just sitting watching it was pitch dark we we're just watching like the the, the moon, moon hit the, the water moon hitting yeah. the, the water and everything mm -hmm. was great and uh i think at that point at that moment uh i was watching you guys you guys were just like in you and your guys's thoughts and i realized how uh, i was thankful of mm -hmm. like having you guys in my life because like my friends my my friends that I had before, they, I mean, we never like really pushed each other. We were just like living to live. Mm -hmm. But now with you guys, I realize how much I've grown, you mm -hmm. know, compared to the last years and how much like I've, I've like learned to, to, to know myself also. Mm -hmm. And I was just really like thankful to have you guys in my life. And I was going to say, but I didn't say, but I, I love you guys. <laughs> 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 but but yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just really happy, and I, I almost, I was almost like crying, uh, and it was just like uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the up. <laughs> and I was just, it was just like yeah, such a great good. moment. And it just felt good to just have that trip hmm. with you guys. Because at first I was gonna go alone to just see my cousin, and then hmm. I, it was just gonna be with you. And then you came, mm -hmm. and I was just really grateful to, for you guys to to be there also. And I just, uh, I was like re. -mem Re reminiscing yeah. Yeah. reminiscing the, the whole trip and uh, it was just uh, it was great yeah. I was really happy when you when you when you brought that up and when you said that mm -hmm. because it, it's not your type to say those things let alone like a, like a little bit more like a, like an emotional comment mm -hmm. so when you did I was kind of like like that's the part that I was saying like where I feel it's safe to say like this trip has allowed you to mature yeah. the fact that you took the time and Cause I remember it. Cause right before that, you laughed. Yeah. You scuffed. I laughed. I heard you said you said you did it, huh? And then I'm like, what's up? And then like you didn't answer. And then afterwards, you said that. So I'm pretty sure like it, you went from like to laughing, thinking about something, to then mm -hmm. realizing. Yeah. And that's the whole point of this trip, right? Is I think we were just all very more so aware of the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, aware that we were able to make this trip. Aware of a lot of the things that we you know, worked on ourselves during this trip and what we've realized along the way. And now that we're bringing all of that knowledge back home, it's kind of like, okay, now with this not new, not newfound knowledge, what can I do now? Mm -hmm. How can I make this now a permanent thing that I can do for the rest of my life? Yeah. I was about to say, like, for my part, that was like a main, mm -hmm. a main part is like, there's, there's two parts of it for me. One was all the stress and anxiety and overthinking that I always have. I didn't have any of it the whole trip. Mm. Like, obviously, let alone the, the overthinking at the end, but for good reasons, right? But mm -hmm. I didn't have, like, an, a moment that I was, like, in my head and then just moody for, like, half a day because I was thinking about other things that, like, 
probably doesn't matter anymore like things like that right so for me just just vibing and experiencing and and just like you know having fun and then not really thinking that's why i was that's why i kept saying to you like every time you were asking or suggesting something i was just like i don't know why you're asking me it's a yes for sure mm -hmm. because i didn't want to be in like that vibe that i'm like where you had to think yeah overthinking things because i always do that like you guys are yeah it's okay you're in your feminine energy <laughs> shut the I fuck up <laughs> i was in my masculine energy. <laughs> <laughs> no not like that but you, you know you know what i mean like i, yeah. I every time there's a situation going up i will overthinking a thousand times yeah. let alone stress myself about it until it happened and then be like oh okay it was fine but then i stressed my myself a thousand times before you get what i mean yeah so most definitely for that and then the second part it, it kind of like looks like the same as you when it comes to like the lifestyle like like connecting with people the way i am as a person i connect more with people like over there or in europe mm -hmm. and just people in general the way they live their lives the way they are like Everyone is, like, sweet. Like, we didn't have, like, anyone that's giving us random-ass attitude. Yeah. We didn't have anyone that was just randomly weird or, like, whatever. Here in Montreal, every day, I can talk to someone from McDonald's and she had a bad, a bad day or, like, yeah. had, anywhere you're going, someone is giving me attitude for no reason. Yeah. Okay, you live your life. That's right. But when I go over there and I see the same workers being the sweetest person on the entire planet and, like, literally, I'm, like... I'd be your friend right now. What do you want to do? Like, you want to go out? Like, what is it? Like, yeah. since people are so sweet, that's my type of people. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like always being happy. You guys know me as, like, my, like, um, not key to life, but, like, my, my goal in life is oh. happiness. Mm -hmm. It's not even anything else. It's just being happy. So, if obviously, if I go to, to some spot and then people are happy, they're, like, um, it's not casual. Like, they're, uh, I forgot the, the, the word for it, but, like, they're just uh, courtois. Yeah, yeah. What's a courteous? Genuine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cour just uh? genuine. Yeah, genuine courtesy, whatever. They're just sweet. For me, that that kind of stuck with me, right? Yeah. And then obviously, like, it's just like I want to live this like lifestyle. Not necessarily like mean like I want to live in Spain type of thing. Yeah. That's not what I mean. I just mean like being able to be free to go to wherever I want to certain countries and to always have this beautiful experience of meeting new people and and talking to other people mm -hmm. because the the world and just canada and us yeah. is so not the same thing as and don't get me wrong i went to greece also it was it was also eye-opening for me so like it's just europe itself i guess yeah and one of the things too is like during this trip like i'm not someone who posts on social media right mm -hmm. but when it comes to like traveling like this and like kind of after doing that that whole work, like while we were traveling and writing and knowing who, who I am and stuff like that, like I'm someone who's who's very creative. I'm someone who loves to, you know, like, like direct things, whether it's music videos, highlight reels, or like doing montage and stuff like that. Like I love to film, I love to create memories, I love to direct, I like having my own touch in every single thing that I do. Mm. Which is why like when I was capturing moments and maybe, uh, maybe posting a little bit more about myself, it's not even because of like uh, like maybe for people that see me, it's like oh he's he's highlighting his his trip and stuff like that. But for me, it's like no, like I created something that I could go in reference to, and I just made like a, a shortened version of it mm. rather than like compiling all these pictures and these videos. I'm like let me make one thing that sums it all like that sums it all up that I could just like go rewatch every now and then, yeah. you know. And that's like that is like that is me. Like it like let's say for example. Like if I were traveling with like like a girlfriend, it would have been the same thing. Mm. I would be wanting to, like to document her the whole way through, just for like the, the sake of making memories, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and I think that was also like a part of me that needed to, like I think that's a part of, a, a part of the experience that also allowed me to grow is not to care to the point where. Now, I don't know if it's gonna sound like too deep or too dramatic, but fuck it. And a, a part that made me not give a fuck while traveling is because i was you know thinking 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 and i think the best thing that summed it up for me is when i wrote to myself look i wrote you know why i don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks or why it doesn't affect me as much as the average person and then i wrote to myself i said because there's nothing that there's nothing that you can do to me that i haven't done already to myself Damn. so what what i meant by that when i wrote that it's like to the relationships that I've lost, to the friends that I've lost, to, you know, fuck ups that I did, to, you know, getting in debt, to getting out of it. 
I did all those things to myself. <laughs> I'm the only one to blame based off on my own actions. Mm-hmm. Whether it's lying, stealing, getting arrested, whatever it is, I did that to myself because I always have control on what is it that I have to do for my life. And so I think the minute that I wrote that down, it, like, like that is what it is. There's nothing that anybody can tell me that I haven't already done to myself. Mm-hmm. Like there's no comment that someone can leave behind that's going to affect me in either way, shape, or form because like I've gone through that turmoil to have your comments not affect me. Yeah. Like you could call me a simp, but this or that or third. It's like, yeah, I am these things. Okay, now what? Mm. What's, what's up? Do you know what I mean? So it's like now it's more so like I want to focus more so like on my own content. I want to focus on travel content. I want to focus on all these things and genuinely not care. I already, I already didn't have a big care what people think. Like now I have even less. Mm-hmm. So imagine how like less time and energy that people that are not significant in my life are going to have. Yeah. Now, both of you, actually. Because you guys are, are like guys that will like the same thing you just said. You, you're like that too. But like he said earlier, you're also like not thinking of much and just go and ask uh, someone for mm-hmm. example, that shit, that good thing, whatever. Yeah. Well, both of you worked on that. I, I love you. I love that for you guys. So I don't have any more. I don't have to just ask everything to everyone. <laughs> no. See, for everyone like uh, watching everything that happened during that trip for us, like uh, online mm. highlights and shit. Oh, it's different. I feel like for them, it's just like a Europe trip. But for us, it was like way deeper than that. And it was actually a life changing trip like that we we had uh, and I, I'm sh- you're sure right bro I'm sure there's some people that are gonna be like oh it's not that deep it's just mm. like a yeah it was just like, yeah. or like it's just like like many people go to Palma like a thousand times and mm. like I, I don't think it's actually just just the location it's just like the experience itself exactly. and obviously like I didn't tell you guys but <laughs> for my part I definitely got to know you guys better um, from like spending 12 days together and don't get me wrong obviously we went to this tv show together but it's different mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then after coming out then we don't see each other listen like all the time but we do but then 12 days together knowing like you guys mood or like you guys like how you feel every from morning to night and then getting to know each other i was like damn like at first like maybe like the first week i was like okay, like, this is the mood, this is this, what are we doing? But then towards the end of the trip and, like, knowing all each other, like, knowing what was going on, I was just like, okay, like, I'm actually, like, a happy, I, I love this, like, it's mm-hmm. more, like, chill, it's more, I didn't have to overthinking again, you yeah. know? Many times during, like, the the, the trip, I, I, well, at first, I was overthinking certain situation. I was like, okay, what we should do, what was blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, I was just like, Everyone is vibing. Fuck it. I don't know why would I overthink. I I think it's the same thing for you. Or like even like everyone was just chill out. We're just chilling and we're just like so just go and, on. And actually, I think the thing I realized the most about you is really like how much you fucking snore. Oh my! Holy fucking shit! God, nah. oh my days, bro. Listen, it was insane. Hey, listen, I snore. But I promise you, these two motherfuckers snores also. So I don't know why they're acting like that. A lot you, less. You <laughs> snore like a no, motherfucker No, you too. Sh- shut the fuck up. You, it's okay. You, it's, I caught you like maybe three or four times. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, yo, him is weird, bro. He doesn't snore at all. And then at some point, he just goes like this. If I sleep on my back, yeah, I'm, <sighs> it's done. So. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, but rarely, it's okay. You shut the fuck up because you. Yeah, you're bad. You, you, you sleep in. First one, off, first off, eyes open like a yes. fucking psychopath and then in a minute because me when i snore is when i'm in deep sleep an hour an hour and a half later you guys have time to fall asleep him it's it's guys <laughs> it's that it's that deep bro. i'm like how fast this guy is already sleeping bro i sleep super and fast. i have no i have to say the story oh my days Fuck. last night bro oh when you spoke in your sleep no, I didn't, bro. bro. Shut up. Before you say that, shut the fuck up. When, <laughs> I bro, didn't. when my when my friend came over to the condo, yeah. and you and you were sleeping, he came and dapped you up, uh-huh. and then left, and then you woke up, saw him, and you're like, "What the fuck? When did this person arrive?" <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, you literally, you literally dapped him up and spoke to him. Yeah. Okay, so let me tell you this story, bro. <laughs> so last night, okay, Carl didn't want to sleep for no fucking reason. He just didn't want to sleep, wanted to stay awake whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And then he's just sleeping on his back. And then I'm sleeping with Carl. Sergio's in a different bed. 
And then he starts snowing like crazy. But usually I'm all right. But now I just couldn't sleep. And then after like 10, 10 to 15 minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm tired of it. The guy is snoring in my face. Like, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> so I just take his arm and I shake him, right? And then Carl just go, I swear to God, it's not me. <laughs> I'm like, what are you, what, huh? He's like, on God, it's not me. <laughs> That's the only thing that comes out of his mouth. I'm like, Carl, I'm waking you up because you're snoring. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm on my phone. Take his phone, <laughs> open his phone and start texting and show me. He shows me his phone. He's like, you see, I'm texting. I'm like, you just took your, f what the fuck? I said, Carl, shut up and just turn around. Because that's how he, that's how he sleeps. You know, he <laughs> sleeps, he, he falls asleep on his phone and like, then, <laughs> like this, 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 this. and then wakes up and goes back to do it <laughs> as if nothing happened. I go, I go, Carl, just turn around. He does, he does, <laughs> like, <yo. laughs> first thing in the morning i'm like carl i have to say this fucking story shut the fuck up yeah. bro that was so fucking funny until i see a <laughs> clip of it or whatever i won't believe we have no honestly i and i have to say the end of the trip i don't know if it was just like the 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 so not many hours of sleep but I laughed so much. Yeah, we definitely lost our minds oh a couple of times. Uh, sure. uh, no, but Barcelona, I was, I was dying. I, I think the, the, <laughs> the tacos thing, the tacos and nachos thing. Yo, you're, what the? Oh <laughs> that was the God. funniest God. thing <laughs> ever. Your reaction was the funniest <laughs> thing on the entire flight. Bro, same thing with him. When, when Sergio is sleepy, he makes no sense whatsoever. Like, no. The guy wakes up from a nap. And then I go, I go like, I like, let's go. We're going to go eat and then we're going to go out. And then Sergio says, okay, where we're going? I'm like, I'm go we're going to eat tacos. And then Sergio's like, ah, I don't want to smell like tacos. First thing first, we literally said, we're going to come back, take our shower and then leave. But then Sergio goes, no, I don't want to smell like tacos. Calls in, in like at, at the end, end of the, the bed far away. And then Ser Sergio goes, oh, Carl, no, I can take some nachos and then all fine. I'm not going to smell like tacos. And but still going to a taco place. <laughs> listen, bro. My, my thought side process eye, is bro. made no sense. Carl listen. goes, "Where's I don't have my phone." Bro, Carl goes, goes like this. He has his phone in his hand. He goes like this. <laughs> bro, he goes, Sergio, Sergio, bro. I swear to God, bro. I said, shut the fuck. Up. <laughs> shut the fuck. Up. It's the same Yo, shit. It's not because you're grabbing fucking nachos that you're not gonna smell. The yes, tacos, because when I say when I say I don't want to smell like tacos, it because it stays in your hand and it stays like the stench stays on. No, it makes no sense. Shut so, the fuck up. So I'm not talking about eating at the taco place gets you to smell bad. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, your car was so mad. Everybody His knows. Anybody who eats you. tacos knows that when you eat tacos, the smell stays on you for at least. But eating three nachos days. wouldn't be different. Yes, because it's nachos. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Go in the comments and please, bro, call this guy out, bro. Let me know if, bro, if you eat tacos or nachos, then it's gonna be the fucking same thing. No, it's not. Oh my days. It's the same. If you eat birria tacos or and you eat nachos, no, it's, it's birria tacos, <laughs> bro. That was so fucking funny, bro. Oh, oh my fuck. days. <laughs> all in all, to say, wait, wait. Towards the end of the trip, it was so same thing. I think it's because we didn't have sleep, bro. Every time that one of us were saying a word, one of the other was like, "Yo, uh, shut, shut the up. fuck up." Because y'all were saying some dumbass shit sometimes. Yo, Yo dude, listen, oh my God. hold on, look, guys. Obviously, we're 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 th three boys traveling <laughs> for twelve days. We're bound to get on each other's nerves at some point, right? <laughs> but the thing that was that, that I was actually the most impressed by is that, let alone that we had those conversations, that m the majority of our conversations were actually like intellectual. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's like I think when we're here, we shoot this shit a lot more. We we catch up more so on stupid things. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have time to think about other things outside of what's happening here, what's current, what's happening in the world. So I think like, the fact that we were traveling amongst ourselves with, you know, you not being not so much on your phone, you definitely not being on your phone and me having my notifications turned off and stuff like that just allowed us more to talk about things that are happening now. here now present and, <laughs> and, and amongst ourselves. And I think that's the difference between vacation high. I don't think we went on vacation for the wrong reason, wrong reasons. I don't think we left on vacation for the wrong reasons. 
I'm saying it again. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just calling you out like this, I bro. Know. So a lot of times people like will travel because they're going through some shit and they're just gonna want to like you know brush their problems under the rug, mm. right? And I think I thought at first it was gonna be like that for me because of what I was going through, and then the only reason why I'm laughing is because I I just remember the moment that like the trip changed for me is because side note, um, what you guys know for like the past like eight months or so, like I've had my PayPal accounts shut down, my mm. accounts frozen, this, yeah. that, and a third. So like trying to pick and choose of where I could go and like extract money from was was a hassle, right? Mm. And I've been dealing with that for months now. And the fact that like already like a month before, no, like a couple of weeks before the trip, some things were opening up and not an- enough for me to be happy with. And then still while we're on the trip, still fighting tooth and nail with PayPal and my bank and stuff like that to then see, or like, updating my stuff and seeing how everything's going to see like the updated amount in my account I was like wait this amount is, isn't right I mean I'll take it but it's not the right amount that's <laughs> supposed to be there you know it just made it feel like the trip was just like that much more it was just better it was just better because it just kind of felt like I, I know it really sounds crazy because we were only gone for 12 days but it just made it seem like I'm on this now path I have a second chance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm at life kind of thing yeah, you know yeah. that like things were starting to open up there's a lot of things about myself that i was discovering things were getting back to normal i was feeling more and more so that i was getting back in tune with myself and i think that kind of just goes to show for people to just to to, to take risks like money's gonna come and go but experiences are here to stay and i think once people start to realize that you do for a fact only have one life to live that you start seeing life in a different way mm. like and, and, and I'm gonna be dead ass. Like for you to actually like experience life, you really have to experience it to the fullest. Like you have to get hurt, you have to get your heart broken, you have to do all these things. So if it means trying to get back with the next, if it means trying to reconnect with a family member, if you have to go through these things that even though you know it's not good for you, but you know you're gonna learn from it, then you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You have to chase it, even if it's bad for you. Because you're gonna grow so much from that. And the person that you end up settling with at the end of the day is, yeah, sure, a partner but you only have yourself at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So you want to be the happiest, truest version of yourself so like that you can look back at your life and be like, I actually lived a life that was the truest to me. Yep. So now it's just time to see where we go next mm-hmm. <clears throat> because I think the time is like to utilize this vacation high that we have and just go on to the next thing rather than get sucked up back into the whole western montreal affiliating yourself with the same environment and people i think it's just time to really double down and make it zila Yo, <laughs> Yo, i was about to say i was about to say shut the shut fuck up, up in your head bro yeah. so now it's just time to double down um we have a lot of things planned for you guys i took a lot of time to think about you know what i want to do with myself and with the podcast and and us as a group so there's a lot of things coming your guys' way. So just stay tuned. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to give us five stars on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon, Patreon. where you guys might get a little bit of a glimpse of what our Euro trip was like. Mm. It's been your boy, Sergio's Talks. It's your boy, Matt. It's your boy, Carl. And we're back, baby. We'll see you guys next week. It's on the gang. <laughs>